The housing market bubble is officially bursting, and despite what you're being told, there is no shortage of inventory in Charlotte County, Florida. And even though we personally saw as many as 2 in 10 houses for sale in certain neighborhoods, they just keep building in this area, which was ravaged by Hurricane Ian in 2022. We drove across the state of Florida to look at this distressed middle-class area where sellers are desperate to get out before the next hurricane season. I found short sales, $50,000 price cuts on seemingly cheap houses. Houses, but what you will see at the end will leave you speechless. Yeah, what the f is this? Up here on the left, this is the roughest property I think we've seen yet. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Climate Prediction Center issued a La Nina watch Thursday, predicting the U.S. will be in a La Nina pattern by the end of summer. And this means warmer conditions and get this, worse hurricane conditions. I put boots on the ground, driving across the state to see what's happening myself. And if you enjoy the style of video, please drop a like and subscribe, as I'd love to do more like this. The first house on our list has a somewhat modern appearance when you look at it from very far, but as soon as you click into it, you can start to see some very unique details. Right off the bat, I'm noticing some rubble and debris sitting around outside of the property, and it really blows my mind that people don't just grab a shovel and scoop that up because it's a huge deterrent for buyers. As far as looking inside, this is an absolute mess. You don't even have covers on the outlets and looking at the door, it does not come with any trim. So you're gonna have to trim out your doors and windows assuming you wanna take on this clearly half finished flip. The main selling point that I could find here is the lighthouse decal on the sliding glass door. But get this, this right here is your kitchen. So this is a bring your own kitchen special. You do have a white fridge in here, but there is absolutely nothing in terms of a sink or countertops, oven, you name it. It is not present here. Now in this photo here, you can see the bed sheets over the window and it looks like there's multiple mattresses piled on top of each other. So maybe somebody was trying to live in this while it was being flipped. I'm not entirely sure. Overall, this looks extremely rough, very dirty bathrooms. Let's take a look at the actual listing itself and see what's going on with the price activity. The listing does mention here that there is a updated roof as of 2023 and a new air conditioning unit along with new flooring throughout. It is in an HOA, but it looks like the fee here is $35 a month. So that's probably not going to be a big deterrent for potential buyers. But when you look at the price history, things start to get weird. As you can see, in 2023, in March, this house sold for $140,000. Now, we're going to be looking at some really cheap houses, but this is cheap even considering how cheap a lot of these houses are out here. Now, eight months later, after it was sold, the house was listed for $270,000, almost double what they bought it for eight months prior. And then, not surprisingly, three months later, we see this aggressive price cut of $35,000, bringing the price down by by 13%. We arrived at the first listing and overall it was in a nice neighborhood. The first thing I noticed was the pile of debris at the corner of the house. The lot is very exposed, but it is a big one. That's what she said. <laughs> and yes, that is a garage door made of wood. There's no possible way that it opens. The neighbor on the left came out and told us what was going on here. She said during Hurricane Ian, the water was as high as the black trim on the side of the house. All we had to do is move up to the next block and we saw three more listings all clustered together. The first one was a lot nicer, but at 330,000, it seemed high. Directly across the street was the second listing at just under 285,000. The HOA is 440 a year and you do get access to a community pool that's actually really cheap considering, followed by a fourth listing, which appeared to be a for sale by owner listing. Here's a look at the community pool and clubhouse, but where are the people? And right in front of this development, there's construction going on, although there were no workers on this Wednesday afternoon. On our way to the next, we saw another house being gutted, and then we saw the worst hurricane damage yet. Sheets of plywood are being used where the roof over the garage used to be. Here's another listing very similar to the rest, and another tarped roof. Someone else moving out here, most likely. And here's our next listing. 
Now, right in the same community, which was part of the same HOA, we have the very next listing. And this one is a little bit more expensive, but it is a three bedroom, two bathroom. So it looks like what they've done here is converted that garage into a bedroom. And it looks like this also has a brand new roof on it, seeing as we can see the construction material sitting in the driveway. It just looks sloppy and it hurts the curb appeal. Now, this does have a decently large fenced in yard, but it is a chain link fence. So there's not any privacy there in terms terms of your backyard or the neighbors on all sides of you there. Now, I do like the tile floors in Florida, especially because when these properties do inevitably flood, oftentimes the tile floors can just be cleaned and reused. But as we click throughout here, we're going to see at least three different types of tile flooring, which is just kind of mismatched and hodgepodge together. So that kind of takes out the positive factor there, in my opinion, of having tile. And in this room in particular, the tile just looks extremely dirty. So I'm going to take a guess here that this flooded at some point and it may not have been buffed and polished afterwards. This room here appears to be that converted garage and it has a change of elevation in this section over to the main house. So if you are going to have a room flood in your house, it's probably going to be your converted garage first. It does have a very old air conditioner and a lot of these should probably be on stands at this point, especially since this area has definitely flooded in recent history. So other than the fact that it has a new roof and it has gutters and I believe the listing mentioned new paint. By the time you look inside, it's pretty rough and the fenced in yard is of limited use seeing as it's chain link. The first thing I noticed is that the listing mentions recent updates, including a brand new roof as well as a screened in lanai. Now, the fact that that was all in 2023 tells me that it was most likely related to Hurricane Ian damage that occurred in 2022. So I think a lot of this was out of necessity. There's also a freshly painted outside. It's been on the market now for 134 days. Despite that, there's only been 270 views on this listing and 22 saves. Not much activity at all. This is what you'd call a very stale real estate listing. And when we take a look at the price history, we start to be able to see what the heck happened here. This particular property sold in May of 2022 for $239,000. And Hurricane Ian hit in September of 2022, which was literally just four months after. That is obviously what led to the new roof as well as the new screened in lanai. Now, based on having to have done a lot of this work myself in the past in the state of Florida, I would say they spent no less than $30,000 on a roof as well as those gutters and the screened in lanai as well as painting everything. So at that point, you can see where they listed it for sale at $290,000 and they were most likely looking to sell it for what they got in it for plus their repairs just to walk away from it because of that hurricane liability. But as you can see, it didn't go well. And a little over three months later, we have an aggressive $40,000 price cut, about 14%, bringing this down to $250,000. Now at this point, it's like a thousand percent chance that they're gonna be taking a loss on this property, especially considering the closing costs involved on that original mortgage and the repair costs after Hurricane Ian. And that's one of the unfortunate things that can happen here is this becomes a race to zero where everybody's looking around at each other and saying, who is willing to lose the most money just to get out? The roofing material in the driveway is really not great. Clearly, this has a new roof, so that should be cleaned up and removed. The lawn was also looking very overgrown here, which doesn't bode well for the property. Just outside the neighborhood is this busted sign followed by a construction site for what looked to be a Dunkin' Donuts, but this didn't seem active at all, almost like it's been sitting like this for a while. The next listing here appears to be the cheapest house that I could find in this county at just under $200,000. So I wanted to put it on our list here to see what the heck was going on with it. I do think the measured drawings can be a good idea, but in this particular market, I don't think they're as important because people aren't as concerned about custom furniture and layout and that type of thing. They would really care more about that in a luxury market where they're actually spending a lot more money. A common theme we're seeing among all of these houses is that they all seem to have new floors and that's likely because most of these houses flooded out in 2022 and it's hard to tell from this photo here but it looks to be a new roof again most likely related to the damage from Hurricane Ian and it's going to be extremely costly to replace those doors and windows with impact glass so that's just not a great sign here for this listing. 
And while the flooring is new, it looks like when you go from the main living area into the kitchen, we're now looking at two different types or at least colors of flooring. And I would have just run a consistent flooring throughout the entire place if I was looking to maximize the value here. And it looks like what they did here is converted over a previous screen room or lanai into a fully usable space. But that gives you this weird opening here in the kitchen where it used to be a window looking out into your screen screen room or into your backyard. So maybe you'd use it as a breakfast nook, but you're not really going to want to be reaching over your sink to be handing somebody a dish. It's just not a very convenient location for something like that. You might think this is a vaulted ceiling, but this is actually hanging down lower than the ceiling throughout. So I don't know why there's this extra space here. This is a better view here where you can see where this most likely was the outside wall originally. And then they opened this up and made this a bonus room for fully usable space. But it's a very rough edge here. This is most likely painted concrete. What you would really need to do here is get rid of this entire section of the kitchen and open the space up entirely. But hey, at least you have some built-ins. And this right here is another view of that pass-through window into the kitchen. I don't know what you would do with something like this. You don't even have enough of a counter space for this to be like a breakfast nook or a bar. Now, tiled showers like this can be nice, but you always take a gamble here of whether or not the plumbing behind that tile was replaced, or if you ever have a leak, you're gonna have to break that tile, and it's nearly impossible to match tile. So you're probably going to be retiling an entire shower should you ever have a leak behind that wall. Now this is pretty unique. This is a commercial bathroom soap dispenser in your residential bathroom. That is definitely a first for me. And this appears to be some type of added screen room or lanai. Most likely after they converted the existing one to usable living space, they went ahead and added this as a replacement. But this looks pretty rough and dated. These aerial shots give us a better view of what's going on with the roofs. So you do have the main roof on the house, which looks like it was updated. But then you have the flat roof on the back, which was most likely the converted lanai or screen room where we saw the pass through window from the kitchen. And I'll tell you right now, that is very old and that was definitely not replaced when they did the main roof. And then you have another type of roof off the side. And I'm guessing that is where they added the new screen room after converting the old one. So I would guess you're going to have trouble there with leaks. And it can also be an issue when you replace the main roof here, what that point of contact looks like where it converts over to your flat roof you can often get leaks in those areas if it wasn't done correctly and as far as the backyard goes here it's really the opposite of private I couldn't even tell you where your yard ends and the others begin it's probably something to do with these sheds but hey maybe that shed could be your extra income potential here where you Airbnb this as your short-term rental for income now the first thing I want to point out is if we take a look at the listing it mentions right here that seller financing is available that's confusing because if this is the cheapest house House in the county, why would you have any trouble getting financing? The other thing that is comical, it says, do not wait. It will not last long. Despite that, as you can see, 535 days on Zillow. Now, if we scroll down here and take a look at the price history, we can start to understand what's going on here with this property. We have to scroll all the way down here to look at when it was sold. And it was sold in July of 2022 for 177,000. But get this, this is absolutely insane. Just six weeks later, the same house was listed for 315,000 thousand, a 78% increase in just six weeks. So what I think happened here is you have a non-permitted flip that has gone wrong. They probably redid the roof, did some painting, and maybe threw down a floor. And I'm guessing that they didn't get a permit on that roof replacement. If we take a look at the price activity thereafter, we can see it listed at 315,000. And then two weeks later, they took it down to 312,000. And then around the end of September, they brought it down to 299,000 to be just under the $300,000 mark. Now from here, things get interesting. We can see that they took the price down to 250 and then they put it back up to 270, brought it back down to 250. And then we have a couple of sale pendings. It went sale pending for the first time in May of 2023. It then went sale pending again at that same price in July. Sale pending once again in August and it went sale pending in September. So this went sale pending four separate times at 249,000, but for some reason it didn't sell and the owner is offering owner financing. 
building. This is all telling me that there are permit issues with this property and there's got to be a very good reason why it went pending so many times and nobody took it. But then as you can see, they got desperate and at the end of 2023, they took all potential profit out of the equation and brought that price down to 199,900, which is insane to think that they had this listed at $315,000 during the peak of the bubble here in 2022. Keep in mind, this person bought the property at $177,000 and put a roof on it and seems to have done an entire floor. So at first they were trying to make a mega profit, then they were trying to make a slight profit. Now they're just trying to get out of it, likely before hurricane season. And look, here we are four months after this price cut and it's still just sitting here on the market over 500 days on the market, the cheapest listing in this area, and nobody seems to want it. On the way to the next one, we saw this gutted house. Front door, wide open, and nobody there. Here's another new house going up. But again, no workers on a Wednesday afternoon. Finally, we arrived at the cheapest listing in the area, and it looks like we were right about the permit issues. The house was flagged with a violation most likely related to replacing the roof without a permit, which is a huge no-no. It was posted on February 21st, which was only about three weeks ago. The violation mentioned junk on the property and a shed in disrepair. This is probably not the only violation. The next listing here has a unique factor going on. If you take a look at the description, it says short sale, short sale. So it's time for a short lesson on real estate short sales. In a short sale scenario, the owner of the home and the lender or the bank agree to sell the house for less than the amount owed on the mortgage just so that the owner of the home can get out from under that mortgage payment. In this scenario, the amount of equity that the person has in the home is actually negative. So they owe more money on that mortgage than the home is even worth based on the current market value. Short sales are essentially a way for homeowners with negative equity in their home to abandon the property without going through the foreclosure process. It often has less of an impact on your credit score. Now, how these come about can be rather interesting, and it often happens with something like an FHA loan, which could be as little as three and a half percent down. So let's say, for example, somebody bought a house like this with an FHA loan and put three and a half percent down on a $300,000 house. Well, that would mean that their equity would be 10,500, but they would owe 289,000 1,500 as far as the outstanding loan balance. But then, hypothetically speaking, let's say a hurricane hits and then interest rates skyrocket and then inventory all over the place in this local market piles up and then houses drop 20% in value. Well, now the market value of your asset, assuming there's even a buyer for this asset, would be 240,000. But the problem is you owe 289,500. Well, you would now have negative equity of about $50,000, which would mean it's short sale time, baby. Maybe. It's something that you saw a lot of in previous housing market crashes, and it's happening right here in Port Charlotte, Florida. Let's take a look at the listing and see what's going on. It again looks like this house probably has a new roof related to Hurricane Ian, and that's really what has hurt this market in terms of the rates going up and then the hurricane that hit here. This has just been a worst case scenario for these homeowners, and I genuinely feel bad for people who are in situations like this. Right off the bat, we're seeing totally mismatched flooring. This is a wider type of tile, it looks like, and then you have square tile, and then you have wooden floors. So just in this shot here, three different types of flooring. This right here, I don't know if this is debris laying on top of the floor or what, but there's also trim that is missing over here. So this looks like a hodgepodge mess to me. This might have been somebody's work from home station where they were working on a plastic folding table. I don't know what was going on in this house, but it doesn't look like this was something that somebody really, you know, set up properly. There was no expenses spared here when it comes to the ceiling fans. I don't know why you would need three ceiling fans in a row. And you can look through this sliding glass door which leads to a bedroom and you can see a fourth ceiling fan. I, I don't I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know why you need four ceiling fans. I, I've got nothing there. The garbage can being duct taped together. Not a positive sign here for this person being financially well off and they probably bit off more than they could chew when they got into that mortgage. 
this house does have an actual garage and I think that a lot of people prefer to have a garage because what you don't realize oftentimes with these houses in Florida is when you convert the garage you then have nowhere to put anything unless you have a shed on the property your garage is really the only place to put stuff because none of these houses have basements for obvious reasons the kitchen itself is not bad it's a little bit small and you still have some kind of weird window going on here so this is a perfect example here of how that opening came to be in that previous listing is this used to be your window to the outside and then they converted that porch or added that porch and then you have a weird window into the interior of your home similar to what we saw there with the sliding glass door out of the bedroom uh, for some reason they don't have a stove so maybe they sold it to pay the mortgage I have no idea but it's going to be a bring your own stove situation here's another view of that mismatched flooring and uh, it would be really annoying to have to take this on and refloor this entire place yourself you'd have to level it all out remove some of that tile and start really from scratch what's funny about this picture in particular is the fact that you have a fan on the ground over here and a fan on the dresser so I don't know like maybe the air conditioner doesn't work I have no idea why this place has so many fans but it makes me think that the either you can't afford to run the AC or the air conditioner doesn't work there is a washer and dryer present here but based on the fact that there was no stove I would be very careful of these people potentially taking that when they sell it because oftentimes people will try to do things like that in a sale situation especially a short sale where they're losing money is try to capture any value that they can maybe even sneaking out some of these appliances just to resell for a couple hundred bucks you should really specify that in your contract especially uh, in the place like Florida where there's a lot of transactions going on although not too many right now apparently now as we can see here it's been on the market for 78 days so this is becoming a pretty stale listing it's at a thousand views and 87 saves so at least it's getting significantly more views than some of these previous listings but if we look at the price history this tells an interesting story we can see that the property was sold back in 2015 for just $48,400 so these were some cheap houses and only in this recent bubble did we see the prices absolutely explode so in April of 2023 it was listed at 275 and it sold at that market price of 275,000 in June of 2023 perhaps they fell on hard times and determined that they had to sell it or they realized that they were upside down on it and figured I don't want to be paying a mortgage where I owe more than the place is even worth and then we see this sad situation playing out of just these $10,000 price cuts they listed it at 250,000 so right off the bat $25,000 less than what they paid for it and despite being listed at that price we can see these $10,000 cuts like a stair step down 250,000 240,000 230,000 the most recent to 220,000 in February of 2024 and despite that we have still not seen this sell so they went from buying this for $275,000 in 2023 to where they're now not even able to sell it for 220,000 which would be a $45,000 loss not considering any holding costs repair costs or closing costs so most likely even if they were to sell this at 220,000 they would most likely be looking at a 50 to $60,000 loss by having bad timing with the housing market bubble and if you were to ask me what this property is most likely worth if we look at the chart here you have to look at where things got out of ordinary and it was really around the end of 2022 that you saw the bubble like appreciation and then it came right back down and then supposedly it went up again most likely just because of where they bought it at 275,000 truthfully it was never worth that price it was never worth anywhere near 275,000 and that's why even at 220,000 it's just not selling even Zillow itself is telling you your sales range estimate would be 196,000 to 217,000 so even with these aggressive price cuts it is still overpriced and if you were to ask me what a good price would be for this property I'm, I'm not even saying I would buy in this area with the hurricane risk factors but I would go all the way back to 2022 here and where the price was at about 160,000 that's probably about what this house is actually worth on our way to the next we saw more listings with no activity to speak of the number of similar listings in this area is honestly overwhelming I don't know how you would decide between them 
Another tarped roof, this seemed to be the solution for many. And this one was even for sale. Finally, we arrived at the first and only short sale listing we were looking at that day. When we got there, the neighbor was actually outside picking herbs and stuff that were growing on the vacant property. There's really nothing to speak of here beyond what seems to be a new shingled roof. The lawn is either overgrown or non-existent on the other side of the driveway. Around the corner was a house that seemed to be getting a new roof, but the tires in the front yard were a bit concerning. But again, where are the workers on this Wednesday afternoon? Those rolls have definitely been sitting there for a while. There was also this house which had plywood walls around over a quarter of the outside structure, and I think someone's living there. Another house for sale. And folks, we saved the best for last here with this listing here at 245000 And as you can see, they just had a $50,000 price cut on this. If we take a look at the listing, this is a bring your own soffa and fascia special because you can literally see right up into the roof where there was very obvious hurricane damage to this property that was just never repaired. The only benefit here is it might save you some money on your inspection because your inspection inspector would be able to take a look at the roof from outside of the property, seeing as you could just look right up in there. Now, one of the very next things that I noticed here is you have a cell tower view from your property. And boy, if this already was a rough property to begin with, having that cell tower in the background is just not helping things. A lot of people don't want to live anywhere near cell phone towers because there's a lot of concerns out there about the health effects of living in proximity to either cell phone towers or big high voltage power lines that is undoubtedly a deterrent for this property selling this is a very old roof it's probably in need of near immediate replacement and it would be very difficult if not impossible to get homeowners insurance on a property with the roof in this condition I mean once again the soffit and fascia is literally wide open here in the front I would say there's no way you could even probably get a mortgage on this because I don't think an insurance carrier would ever remotely consider writing a policy on a place in this condition. There's really nothing good to say. The air conditioner is from 2021, so you do have a newer air conditioning unit. That would be the only positive here so far. Here's a better view of the soffit and fascia completely open there. Tons of animals and pests undoubtedly inside of that. And within the property itself, very dated, old cabinetry. In fact, this one's missing a cabinet door. You have a sort of a weird um, opening here. There's not even a counter to rest a dish on, so it would just be for looking at your guests. You have some built-ins. This was probably where they put a television at one point. Seems like the ceiling fans are a big thing in this area. You got one, two, three ceiling fans in this property. No expenses spared on those ceiling fans, folks. I do like the rounded archway here, but again, one of my biggest pet peeves with these properties is having so many different types of flooring present in this property. And this looks like that old type of fake wood flooring. And if this stuff gets wet, it's off often like wet cardboard. The new laminate vinyl plank flooring can be waterproof, but it also depends if that's been installed correctly and it depends if they removed the existing flooring because if you have crappy flooring like this under new LVP and that flooring bubbles, you might have to pull up your LVP. Really just not much of anything to say about this property. Water heater looks a little bit newer. This is just uh, scary. I don't know if this is the electrical panel or what this is but I, I don't know if those are fuses. I actually did a quick Google search and Mana Block is actually a water distribution system. So this allows you to turn on and turn off water to various parts of the property. This can be convenient, but these systems have been known to have some issues of leaking in the past. So that's sort of a take it or leave it situation there. Another ceiling fan in this room here. So I think we're at a total of five ceiling fans in this property. Oh, actually this might be another one. This might might be six ceiling fans. Overall, this is an extremely rough property, and the fact that they're trying to get even $245,000 for it is kind of laughable because you would need to have an investor who was willing to buy this cash because 
You're probably not getting a mortgage on this because I see no way that you could get an insurance policy with the roof in the current condition. So you would need to have an investor who wanted to come in and then buy this cash, put 50 grand into a flip. But the problem is if they did that, there's no guarantee. In fact, there's very little prospect of them being able to flip this thing for a profit because there's so much inventory surrounding this. Not to mention, you're going to have to find a buyer who's willing to be looking at a cell phone tower all day long and not be concerned about potential health issues there. So this is just a mess. And the fact that they had it priced higher just blows my mind. But let's take a look now at the description and then the price history on this. So as you can see right here, it mentions the home stood up to Hurricane Ian, just missing some soffits. Um, that's a way to put it lightly. You have some gaping holes. Previously was rented at 2300 a month and now it's vacant. So I want to run an experiment here looking at that rent because what that means is that this is most likely uninvestable into because first of all, there's no way you could rent it out in the current condition. It needs major work just to get insurance on it and then to get it rented. But let's take a look at a mortgage calculator here just for fun. Now with an FHA loan, you have to own or occupy the property, but of course some people do bend the rules. So let's assume somebody was looking to buy this with an FHA loan and then they had the PMI factored in and we already know home insurance rates are skyrocketing across all of Florida. So by the time you factor all of that in, your mortgage is going to be equal to, if not a little bit higher than that 20 $2,300 monthly rent that it was supposedly rented for prior. Not to mention, rents have also come down a ton across most of Florida. So I very much doubt that you would even be able to get $2,300 a month for this property. So in my opinion, a property like this is 100% uninvestable into. It wouldn't make sense to buy it to rent out. And it would make very little sense to flip this property in this current housing market. So it's sort of just stuck here. And uh, I have no idea what's going to happen happen to something like this. Maybe at a certain price, there is a buyer that comes out of somewhere, but it's probably going to have to be a cash buyer. Let's take a look at the price history to see what the heck is going on here. The one benefit I will say is the current owner of this house bought it in 2015 and they paid $79,000. So it's crazy to see how quickly these prices went up during that real estate bubble. And they had listed it for sale in 2022 at about 250,000. It was unsuccessful, but then and despite that, in 2023, they wanted to get a little bit more and listed this thing at 299000 Obviously, it didn't sell. They opted to remove the listing and then relist it for sale at the beginning of this year, listing at 295000 And this blows my mind here. 11 days after listing it, they cut the price by $50,000. It doesn't make sense to do something like that. That's such an aggressive price cut. And even despite doing that, it didn't even cause any activity activity here on it. We didn't see any sale pending or anything like that. So they cut the price aggressively after clearly overpricing it. So there's no way that this is selling anywhere near that price of 245,000. If we look at the chart here, it's saying that we're back down in the range of, uh, you know, 230,000. So it's still overpriced. I don't know even know why they'd be pricing it like this. I would say this would have to sell in well below $200,000 territory. So, uh, got a surprise for you. What? We bought this. <laughs> yeah, no. No, that's actually, yeah, we were out here because I bought this, that was the surprise, that's what I saved for the end. <laughs> Have fun. You can live there with Mac. You wouldn't want to live there? Um, no, I'd rather take a tarped roof house. Thanks. No, there's a few of those in this neighborhood, but... <laughs> There was truly nothing good to say about this listing. The roof damage was even worse than it seemed in the photos. Oh, well, that's a bathtub out back. Oh. But hey, she was right. The house does come with an outdoor tub, which most would consider to be a luxury. And that concludes our uh, our home show. Oh, hold on a minute. And not yeah. What the hell is this up here on the left? This is the roughest property I think we've seen yet. What happened out here? Hurricane Ian happened out here, Ryan. What, what, do you, what do you even, does that even have any value left? Right in the middle of this big development is half of a standing house. A sobering reminder of the real danger associated with much of Florida. 
And the craziest part to me is that they're still building, not just apartments, but hundreds, if not thousands of houses in addition. Every one of those staked lots is going to be a new home. Meanwhile, there's tons of listings with prices that have crashed that nobody seems to want. Who exactly is going to buy these new houses as they come online? What will that do to these already depressed prices? Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. And if you want to see me do a similar video like this in Fort Myers or possibly somewhere else, drop a like, subscribe, and leave me a comment down below where I should check out next. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for future videos just like this one, and be sure to turn on all notifications. Leave me a comment down below of where we should visit next, and I hope to see you next time.